This tiny dot next to the camera on your iPhone is a microphone. It helps to get good quality of sound while taking a video. Charging your phone when going to bed is one of the biggest mistakes to make that will damage your battery in the long run. A battery's task is to power up your phone or laptop until it depletes, so it's best to let it do its job. Ideally, you should keep the battery between 20% and 80% to increase its lifetime. You shouldn't let your phone reach 0% either, because it also drains the overall battery life expectancy. It's fine to leave your phone plugged in every now and then, but it's a huge mistake to charge your device under the sun. It'll take longer to top up and will absorb the heat faster, causing it to shut down under extreme pressure. Batteries often tend to overheat, so keeping them under the sun is like leaving a batch of cookies in the oven for too long. Speaking of cookies, you probably heard they're useless and bad for your phone. Put that pack back! I'm not talking about those cookies here. I mean that pop-up notification that comes up and lets you accept cookies for the website preferences. Those cookies are basically meant for saving some basic information, so that you don't have to go through the tedious effort of selecting the preferred language, adding your email and password, or other simple things that let you use the website with ease. Having an overloaded number of saved cookies and cache can slow down the internet speed in your browser, causing it to crash at times, or even halt you from accessing certain parts of the website. So, every now and then, it's good to clear them out so that your browser and device can run smoothly. Avoid downloading apps from sketchy sources, even if the app has a flashy sign that says free. Those apps carry viruses or malware that can harm your phone and ruin your data. The best you can do is avoid unofficial app stores and stick to those with reputable reviews and ratings. If you succumb to such apps, at least download some antivirus software to defend yourself and alleviate the risk of damage. Just because your phone is water resistant doesn't mean you should take it swimming with you often. Yep, you better leave it on some firm soil when you go swimming. Water resistant simply means that if water accidentally spills on it, you won't have to worry about any heavy damages. 5 to 30 minutes of water exposure is fine, but still risky. And more importantly, don't dip your phone in water frequently, even if it's for a short amount of time. The long-term exposure will damage the hardware, which will cost you a lot of money to repair. Cleaning your computer screen is always a good habit, but have you ever cleaned it on the inside? Nope, you shouldn't dismantle your computer for no reason or remove any hardware pieces. But dust can collect inside and damage your hardware. So, get a clean, dry towel, preferably a microfiber one, and wipe away the dust. Make sure to clean the fan and get the inside corners that can store pockets of dust and debris. You'll be surprised to find tiny hairs, crumbs, and other dirt inside your computer. Don't use regular cleaning products for wiping surfaces to clean your laptops or phones from the inside. The chemicals inside can cause permanent damage. Rule of thumb, always get protective cases for your phones. Some of them will come with a hardcover case upon purchasing it. But if not, then get one. It will pay off if you ever drop your phone. The case will save your screen and you'll no longer get those annoying scratches that seem to pop up out of nowhere. Whatever you do, at all costs, don't stick any metallic objects in your charging ports. Paper clips, pins, and wires aren't meant for cleaning them. A metallic object can damage the hardware inside the charging port. Little holes like charging ports can store a decent amount of dust and other little things that can ruin your phone. Use a wooden object like a toothpick to clean around the edges. Make sure to be gentle, otherwise you can break some sensitive objects inside. Don't try to remove dust using your own breath. Water particles can even be more devastating than metallic objects. Don't carry your laptop by its screen, even if it's just a short distance. The body's there for a reason. It can handle the pressure of being lifted and placed on any surface. The screen is thin and sensitive and has delicate hinges that aren't built for withstanding the type of pressure like being carried. The ideal way to carry a laptop is by holding it with two hands and placing it on a smooth and flat surface. When connecting to public Wi-Fi hotspots, always make sure that the connection is legit. Imagine this, you're sitting in your favorite coffee shop with a lot of work on your hands, 
and find out that there are two independent Wi-Fi networks. You choose one of them and get to the landing page where they want you to enter your email, password, and other personal information. Weird! The landing page is almost identical to the page you usually open, but you notice some things are quite off. First, there are some common typos in the sign-in page. Next, the logo of the coffee shop is pixelated. This is a mock-up site that bad people use to steal your data. Since they are in control of the site, they see your email and password on their end and can now have access to your bank account and other sensitive information. Now, one reason why your 1% battery might last a long time is that your phone's playing it safe. It has 1% battery left for you to use Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, stream a movie, all while downloading a system update. But if you're just scrolling your feed, 1% is going to last a while. There's also a bit of psychology in it. When you see that your phone's about to turn off, it kind of encourages you to plug it in ASAP. By the way, modern batteries can't be fully charged or fully drained. If you live somewhere cold and your iPhone keeps turning off whenever it's below zero outside, go to Settings, Battery, and check the battery health. If it's less than 85%, you might want to think about changing the battery. Otherwise, it'll turn off every time you leave the house. Even if you just upgraded your old phone to a brand new one, don't forget to charge your old buddy regularly. Lack of charge may impact battery life. As long as you want to keep your old phone just in case, make sure you charge it at least a few times a year. Same goes for old game consoles and laptops. Embrace the dark mode if you want your phone to keep its charge as long as possible. The brighter your background is, the more energy it eats up. If you have dark mode installed, it'll use less power. If your laptop is a Mac and it has a backlit keyboard, change your settings to save some battery. Whenever you're not using your keyboard, the backlight should power off. Go to Keyboard Settings and choose how long you want the keyboard to stay on for. I have mine on for 5 seconds. To boost your Android, just turn off your data when you don't need it. If you disable the always-on mobile data, you'll have a longer battery cycle. Other things you can do are reduce brightness, opt for wired headphones instead of Bluetooth ones, and switch to airplane mode when you don't need active data. The last 20% of a battery takes longer to charge than the rest. That's because lithium-ion batteries are kind of complex. When the battery's low, the charger supplies a fixed current. It's all kind of complicated, but just keep it in mind. Your smartphone has a protection circuit in it to save its battery. When it shuts down and says you have 0% battery, there's actually a tiny bit of juice left in there. But your device is designed not to use it. If a modern battery somehow magically got to actual zero, you wouldn't be able to charge it again, and you'd have to get yourself a new phone. Now, don't drain the thing down to zero, then recharge it back to 100. Specialists say that the best range is between 20 to 90% if you want your battery to last longer. If you let the battery go down to zero all the time and then juice it back up, you can damage the inside materials and it can even cause battery corrosion. Now, it's not true that all chargers are created equal. The best thing you can do for your phone is to use its original charger. Yeah, some generic Able cable or adapter may look just as good as the original one, but why risk it? It might actually be a good charger, but it may be the wrong voltage. You don't know which country it came from. (laughs) Different voltages can potentially damage your gadget. Plus, generic chargers usually don't include any mechanism to protect your phone from energy surges. If the phone just won't charge, here's a few reasons why. A faulty cable, low current power source, or even a broken USB port. The most common problem is a damaged cable. Those things have to endure a lot. We constantly wrap them, fold them, twist them, drag them. I feel kind of bad now. Try a few different cables to see if that was the problem. If the cable just won't work, try cleaning the cable jack. Sometimes some random lint is hiding out in there, blocking the charge from going through. You can usually just blow on it. That won't work if the jack's rusty, though. Speaking of phone charging, it's also important to learn how to do it right. If you don't lock your phone when you're not using it, it may eat up too much of your battery. 
Phones usually have a default screen lock set for about 2 minutes, and that can eat into your battery life. Another tip is to avoid using mobile data, especially if the connection is poor. Your gadget's gonna waste its charge just trying to find a connection. Temperature's important too. Don't expose your phone to direct sunlight. Overheating can drain your battery. Tiny ridges on the F and J keys on the keyboard will help your fingers navigate during touch typing. When your index fingers are on these ridges, you know exactly where the letters are. Want to edit your photos? Click on Albums, then tap See All. It's on the right, above your folders. Then tap Edit. Your folders are now movable, and you can place them in any order you want. If you switch to iOS 14, the Weather app can show the air quality index for some world cities. So if you live in New York or London, you can check if the air quality is good today. The Weather app has some other updates too. It has a minute-by-minute forecast for how intense the rain or snow will be in the next hour. Only for the U.S. though. If you live in the U.S., Europe, Japan, Canada, or Australia, you can see alerts for any severe weather conditions like tornadoes, storms, or floods. If you live in a really cold place and your iPhone keeps turning off whenever it's super chilly outside, go to Settings, Battery, and check the battery health. If it's less than 85%, you probably want to change out your battery. Apps on iOS 14 can be merged together. Just drag one on top of another. Just like when you want to place an app into a folder. Now you can customize your screen even more and hopefully save a little time whenever you reach for your phone. You can take a screenshot on your iOS 14 just by tapping your finger twice on the back of your phone. Go to Accessibility, Touch, Back Tap. You can choose from tons of options like Screenshot, Mute, Home, Lock Screen. The list is huge. Your phone even has a triple tap function in case you're kind of a fidgety person. Your iPhone can scan any document and even recognize, copy, and paste text from photos. Just download the Google app, then tap the frame icon in the upper right corner. The camera opens. Then, all you need to do is choose text mode and take a photo of the text you want to scan. It might take a while to process, but when it's done, you can copy the text and paste it wherever you want. You can even use it to translate text instantly, like foreign menus, street signs, and instructions. Even if you switch to iOS 14, you can still choose the time and the alarm clock with a regular swipe instead of just dialing it. If your mobile data isn't that great, airplane mode might come in handy. Turn it on and wait 5 to 10 seconds to get a better internet connection. If you're on 3G, it'll become LTE. Also, if you charge your phone with airplane mode on, it'll charge about 15% faster. To make the video quality on your iPhone better, Try these three simple tips. Go to Settings, Camera, Formats. Choose High Efficiency Camera Capture. Then go back to the menu, go to Record Video, and choose 1080 at 30 frames per second. Last but not least, turn the grid on in the Composition section. No more wonky photos. Time to think about cybersecurity. In the search bar, type Passwords. Choose Security Recommendations and turn on the Detect Compromised Passwords function. If you type the wrong number into the calculator, you can delete it digit by digit with a simple left swipe. Same trick works for dialing phone numbers. So if you dial the wrong digit, just swipe to delete it. With iOS 14, you don't need to waste time creating multiple folders for your apps. There's an app library for that. It automatically categorizes all the apps you use. The recently added section has the apps you recently downloaded. Plus, it likes to display recently launched app clips. Now you can set the default app for your browser or email. Go to settings and scroll down until you see the app you want as your default. When you tap on it, you'll see the Default Browser App section. Tap it and choose the one you want from the list. iOS 14 has a sweet feature that lets you hide any private photos. Go to Settings and choose the Photos section. Scroll down until you see the Hidden Album section. If you activate the Hidden Album button, anyone with access to your phone will be able to see them. All iPhones have an inbuilt QR reader no matter if it's a good old retro iPhone 5 or a brand new iPhone 12. The improved QR reader for iOS 14 can scan almost any code, even if it's tiny or wrapped around some object. As for music, you can discover new favorite tracks, 
and autoplay mode can look for similar songs you might like. There are also a bunch of new filters to search through your library faster than ever. Spatial audio is basically 3D sound that gives you that immersive experience. To enable this feature, go to the Bluetooth section, tap the eye next to your AirPods, yeah, it only works with newer AirPods, and hit the Spatial Audio button. Also, check the Accessibility section. You need to hit the Follow iPhone button to make sure it all works properly. iOS 14 takes care of your sleep with its new Sleep and Wind Down modes. When you click on Clock, you'll see a lot of new features, like Sleep Schedule. First, make sure it's on. Then, edit the active days. You can set a sleep goal and then tap the Wind Down section. Add the apps you want to the Wind Down shortcut. When your phone is in sleep mode, you can access them directly from your blocked screen. No more late night zombie scrolling. If you're noticing that your computer is getting slower as time goes by, try checking its temporary cache. On a Mac, you can do it by pressing Command plus Shift plus G on the home screen. This will open a command window that will offer you to go to a specific folder of your choice. From there, type in exactly this, tilde forward slash library forward slash caches. The tilde symbol stands for the home folder, just so you know. The window that opens will show you a lot of files and folders that were created by various apps in the past. Check the size of the folder that contains them. If it's less than one gigabyte, you can safely leave it be. It doesn't do any harm. But if it's three gigabytes or bigger, feel free to delete all the files there, or at least those that take up too much space. Files in the cache folder are basically useless as they only make some processes in specific apps run a bit faster. You don't need most of them, so safely remove them from your Mac. You'll notice your computer running faster altogether from now on. On a Windows PC, press Win plus S to open the search bar, and then type percentage temp percentage in it. You'll see the temp folder where all the temporary app files will be contained. Again, check the size, and if it's too large, just clean it up. Another reason for your computer to take way too long to get going is that you might have too many programs running at startup. For Windows users, click Control plus Shift plus Escape to open the Task Manager. Then, go to the Startup tab and choose which programs you want to launch with your system. For Mac OS, go to System Preferences, click on Users and Groups, and select your user. After that, click on the Login Items tab. You can remove or hide startup applications from here. But before you start turning off all your startup programs, make sure you do your research first because some processes might be needed by third-party programs you have installed. A useful key combination if the dock on your MacBook annoys you, press Command plus Option plus D and the dock panel will disappear. Click again and the panel will reappear. A quick and easy way to draw the Apple logo in any text editor, press the Option plus Shift plus K keys and the company icon will appear. It only works on an English keyboard layout. On Windows and Mac OS, you may turn on the typing dictation function. On Mac, System Preferences, Keyboard, and Dictation. On Windows, Dictation is installed using Ease of Access, then Speech. Then press Win plus H whenever you want to dictate text. The program you're working in just froze, and it's not responding to anything. You're clicking, crying, cursing, nada. There are a few ways to fix this problem. One of them is to use Control plus Shift plus Escape. This will bring up the Task Manager window. Now you can select the program, causing all that fuss, and press End Task. If you're on a Mac, then try Command plus Alt plus Escape. Open one app that you need for your work and press the Windows key plus left arrow. Then. Open another app and click the Windows key plus right arrow. Now, two windows are sharing your screen. Checking facts in your academic work while looking directly at your sources? No problem. Photoshopping while watching bright side videos? Easy peasy.
The Windows key combined with the plus or minus key will open the Magnifier app, which allows you to zoom in and out wherever you point your cursor. The same goes for Mac OS, but you need to use the combination of Alt, Command, and Plus to zoom. Set up Bluetooth, connect with devices in your network, use your PC as a Wi-Fi hotspot, turn notifications on and off. Those and many other functions in newer versions of Windows are available in one place called Action Center. To open it, simultaneously press the Windows key plus A. For Mac users, your Notification Center is always a click away in the top right-hand corner. If you're proofreading a long text, it can take quite a bit of time because your backspace deletes letters but not whole words. Well, there's a way to delete a text word by word. Just press Control and Backspace if you're on Windows. As for Mac OS, it'll be Command plus Backspace. If you're desperate to find some information online, but you don't want open separate tabs for each keyword, then just type both of them in with OR written between them. For example, type Dictionary or Translate into Google Search. Just make sure to put OR in all caps. If you're super busy looking for some information online, and then you accidentally close one of those really important tabs, pressing Ctrl plus Shift plus T will save you. If you're on a Mac, then the shortcut is Command plus Shift plus T. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.